Hello, Ola Inca in Phoenix, Arizona. Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut transitions gray lenses for your Ray-Ban 5121 Wayfair color 2000, which is the classic shiny black in the 50 eye size. So I'm going to take your frame out of the original packaging as they send it to me. Of course, your Ray-Ban case, your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth, and the star of the show tonight the Ray-Ban 5121. Of course, it comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping. And I'm gonna include that to you as long as, as well as both your demo lenses, one of which that says Ray-Ban. And of course, again, this is the Ray-Ban 5121, color 2000 in the 50 eye size. So let me pop out your original demo lenses and begin. Actually, I need to put a little sticker on the back to let me know which number this one is. Let's scan this. And now I can trace the shape of your frame. Everybody wants to know, how does the computer know what shape lens to cut? This is why a little stylus pops up and it goes around and traces the shape of the right lens before moving over and tracing the shape of the left. Here at freeprescriptionlenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and you will receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars you will get reimbursed for this purchase whether these are prescription or not but in your case they are prescription. They are going to be reading glasses. So that is the shape of that green outline is the shape of your lens. And now I have to get your lenses prepped. Let's see, I have to hit one button there. Okay, so these are your lenses. I'm gonna take them down to my Marco 101 lensometer. And I'm gonna find the optical center of your frame. I'm gonna open them up out of the original packets. And of course you get the manufacturer's original packaging with these so you know you're getting Essilor brand lenses. Now the lens comes with a little laminate on the front of the lens to protect it too. So nothing rubs against the front surface of the lens during shipping and you're gonna receive all of this. I'm going to stick it right there so I don't lose it. But I'm going to put the power drum on my Marco 101 lensometer to 125. Actually, let me zero everything out and make sure the crosshairs of the scope are exactly where they should be. And I'm going to put one dot on the center of your lens. That is the optical center. That is going to sit directly in front of your pupil. Let's name that one. Put an R on there for right. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's do the same thing now for the left. Take it out of the protective packet. Hang on to that sleeve. Put it into the lensometer, find the optical center of the lens, put a dot on it, darken that dot so you can see it at home, and let's put an L on there for left. Or simply not right. Just like me, I ain't right either. But let's take your right lens, put it onto the platform. The reason I put that dot on there, let me magnify everything back up, is that's going to go directly in front of your pupil. That is the optical center. So this is the block, or as I like to call it, Jenny from the block. My wife loves those JLo movies, but I'm gonna, that's right, honey, I'm talking about you. But I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need a double-sided adhesive sticker of which, hey, wait, I've got two of those, right? Yeah, as we say here in, in the dirty South. The black side is the sticky side. So I'm gonna take two of these. Did I already lose one? I think I might have. So put the sticker on one, put the sticker on the other one. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky again. Now on the back is a little silver button. That is a magnet. That's gonna do its job twice. The first one is right now. It's gonna hold it in place in the arm attached to the magnet that is already in there. And with my wonderful stylus, hit the button. And now the block is going to be applied to your right lens. Let's do the same thing now for your left lens. The one marked L. I'm gonna put that right there over the optical center, that dot right there is where it goes. Pull the paper away to make it sticky on this side. Put it into the arm, hit the button, and now the arm is being applied to the left lens. The block, the block. The arm is applying to the block. Now this is the actual edger. This is what costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I always recommend everyone go out and buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter, and then you can cut glasses at home. You won't need me anymore. The actual cutting wheel that's going to do all the work is this wheel on the far right. It's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away the lens material. 
and this wheel in the center with that channel that little valley that's what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame now the magnet is going to do its job a second time it's going to hold it in place in the chuck or as i like to call it the charles because i don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck but i'm going to wake up the computer pull your shape up that is the shape of your lens and i do not want to polish the lens now these are polycarbonate lenses so i'm going to touch the pc button if these were plastic or high index plastic or tri trivex i would hit another button again i don't want to polish it i don't want to put a bevel on the front surface of the lens i only want to put a bevel on the rear surface the concave surface so i'm gonna hit the green arrow which is start in every language the door closes that clamp is going to shut and then the lens is going to move up and it's going to be traced by two white styluses making sure the lens is large enough to fit into the frame it's going around tracing the shape now and it's actually going around and measuring twice measuring the thickness at every point on the lens to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so the lens fits best inside the frame now in just a minute the cutting wheel is going to move over and then your lens is going to touch down onto the cutting wheel now if you notice that flickering of light in the back that is water running that is only to catch the optical sawdust where plastic and high index plastic cut wet polycarbonate cuts dry And that is your lens beginning to cut. So your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. They're also, they're made by Essilor, which is one of the premium lens companies in the world. Essilor calls polycarbonate airwear because your lenses are light as air. The TR stands for transitions, the Roman numeral seven, V11, and GY is gray. So these are polycarbonate transitions gray lenses, transition seven series. Now polycarbonate is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They're virtually unbreakable. Your lenses are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection built in. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours, when you're in direct exposure to the sun which probably happens a lot in phoenix now if you notice water has begun spraying on the lens it does it for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away any optical debris that arm is moving into place at the end of that arm is a little spinning wheel like you find on a dremel tool and it is now applying the safety bevel to your lens the rear surface of the lens just to smooth out any roughness that may be left over from the cutting cycle now I love the name Ole Inca. It was so beautiful I had to look it up. It means one who brings salvation. What a nice name. You know, some people have the gift of making people happy just by walking into a room. So you and I are related. You do that. You bring joy simply by walking into a room. Whereas me, I bring joy by walking out of the room. But hey, we still make a team. We still have the same effect. Either we're coming or going. So. I want to use my thumbnail to remove all the debris around the edge of the lens. Now let's see if it fits first time around. I'm going to tuck your lens in at the outside corner, push down at the nose, and it snaps right in. Move that little optical debris there. And I'm going to take the left lens, put it into the chuck. Thanks Chuck, Charlie, Chucky baby. Flip that over to L and hit start. And again, the door closes, that clamp shuts. And then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure it's large enough to fit into the left side of the frame. And you actually see it tracing as it goes around. And of course, again, measuring the thickness of the point at every position of the lens to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so your lens fits best inside the frame. Although with your prescription, you're going to have no edge thickness. But every day I work with some very strong prescriptions and that becomes more critical then. Now, this is done let me put that stylus back i'm gonna take the block off pull the sticker off it is no longer needed and i'm going to go down to my marco 101 lensometer put it in right above that red dot and i am going to read the power of plus one and a quarter we're at 0 0.25.50.75 one one and a quarter now the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter and it starts at zero and goes up from there again 0 0.25 0 0.50 0 0.75 one one and a quarter and so on 
So you need five steps of magnification to see clearly. Now, with your glasses off, everything is a little bit too small. When you put your glasses on, it will actually magnify by five steps to bring everything into focus for your farsightedness. Now, the other thing I forgot to mention, the AS in front of airwear stands for aspheric. Aspheric simply means not spherical. A spherical lens is completely round in every direction and gives you an ugly cosmetic fishbowl appearance. As you can see, these lenses are completely flat. Aspheric just means much, much flatter to fit in today's flatter curvature frames. So again, you're going to end up with the finest cosmetic value possible. When you buy glasses from people online, they charge you for plastic lenses. And then if you want to upgrade to the thinner, lighter weight, unbreakable, bulletproof lenses with UV protection in them, both UVA and UVB protection, they charge you an upgrade fee for that. And then if you want the aspheric lenses, they charge you another upgrade fee for that. So this is someone else's top tier premium lens that you get for free simply by buying the frame from me at freeprescriptionlenses.com. Now you did pay an extra $50 to upgrade to the transition lenses, which in Phoenix I'm sure is critical. So take the left lens out, I'm going to dry it off, make sure there's no debris around the edge of the lens, and now I'm going to tuck it in on the other side and using my thumbs I pressed out the nose, it snaps in perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and take this block off, pull the sticker off, and I'm going to go down and measure the power of the left lens and what do you know we're still on plus 1.25 because we haven't moved anything now here's something else I like to do at every point in the video while I'm cleaning the lenses is remind you that when you get these in the mail and of course free shipping anywhere in the continental United States or actually anywhere in the United States what am I saying continental I'm thinking about breakfast next time I stay in a hotel but I like to point these out that when you do get these in the mail for free, when you try these on, these could be too loose or too tight, a very small chance of that. However, there is an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistics, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. And when I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off and I press down, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. So flip them over, press down. There is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do, and they're not askew in any way, and the same amount of tension on each spring hinge. So, Olainka, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Forgive me, it's the first time I've heard that name. But I just love it. It's a beautiful, beautiful name. So, this is what your lenses look like clear. I'm going to go ahead and expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light in my little transitions box back here in the corner. And as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to turn dark. It takes a little bit longer when you walk back inside of a building. 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now, Olayinka, pay attention. This is important. All transition lenses will get dark on day one, as you will see. Give them two weeks of exposure to the sun, and they're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks until they get to their final setting. After that, they will work for years with maximum performance. The only time they will not work is if you're behind the windshield in a traditional car. Your windshield has UV protection so your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun and that's why your lenses don't turn dark in a car. Now if you have a convertible or a motorcycle they will darken or as soon as you step out of the car. Now the other thing to keep in mind is they are temperature sensitive. When it's 80 to 90 degrees and below they get darker than they do when it's in triple digits which is important to you in Phoenix because you spend a lot of your time there. Now I remind everyone that when it's in triple digits you're miserable, they're miserable. Everyone's miserable when it's over 100 degrees outside and no one likes to work over 100%. So again, this is the first time they've been activated. Don't worry, they're going to get darker than this. Come on, we talked about that, don't you remember? But that's it. If anyone has any questions about what I can or can't do, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Hola Inca in Phoenix, Arizona. Hope you enjoyed watching as I cut plus 125 transitions gray lenses for your Ray-Ban 5121 color 2000. The shiny classic black and the 50 eye size 
and everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring the love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.